Hey, what's up? My name is Sorel and I have lived in Iceland on and off for five years and this video is about how I moved to Iceland and some little extra hints and tips in case you are looking to also call this country home. reasons to move to Iceland. Nature, of course. Pure air and water. There are many less people. It is a much colder climate if that's your sort of thing. Highly creative environment. Because there are so few people here, you feel like you're not just a number. You actually feel like you could be somebody. I have a video which touches on the pros and cons of living in Iceland, including the difficulties of living here, because it's obviously not all unicorns and rainbows. Every country has its downsides, so you can check that video out on my channel. Also, if you're interested in the actual journey of how I ended up coming to stay here, it was very unexpected that I was going to live in Iceland. There is a video about that as well on my channel. Let's get into the logistics. Visas. I am one of those lucky ducks that has dual citizenships. So I am Australian as well as Polish. I have a Polish passport. And since Iceland is part of the Schengen zone, it means that for me, I just had to walk into the immigration office and apply for a social security number, which is called a Kenetala. Now you have to apply for this if you're gonna be here for more than three months. Since I didn't have any jobs lined up, I had to show that I had enough cash in my bank account to support myself, which is roughly, or at the time it was about 7,000 USD. Now I had worked my butt off in Australia for four years prior. So I was able to save up enough cash to stay here which is awesome but the money also runs out very fast because Iceland is very expensive I'll touch on that a little bit later once I received my Kenetala I was able to apply for my bank accounts get health care I could get a job but getting a job is not the easiest thing in this country. Now, if you aren't from the Schengen zone, um, it's a lot harder for you to live here. So my friends from the USA and Australia actually came over to Iceland and the way they were able to stay for longer periods of time was actually to enroll in learning Icelandic. This student visa allowed them to stay for one year, but they were not allowed to work here. After a year, if you don't have a different visa, you have to leave. And here's my fiance story, someone outside of the Schengen zone, how he was able to stay in this country. It's recording. That you have to say action. Action. <laughs> So unlike Sorel, I wasn't born with a European passport. I only have an Australian passport, so it's much, much harder for anyone outside of Europe to move here to Iceland. You need some kind of special visa to be able to come here. The initial visa that I came here on was a specialist work permit. Now you do have to have a company sponsoring you on this visa and you have to have some kind of special skill that is missing in Iceland. So don't think this is an easy route. You have to have some kind of special qualification or credentials. That visa is also only valid for one year at a time. So it has to constantly be renewed every single year and the same company or a different company has to be sponsoring you for that visa otherwise you cannot get it thankfully now I'm on a much more flexible visa I'm now registered as the spouse of a European citizen now one of the benefits of Sorel being European is that we are registered as a cohabiting couple which means I can get a five-year spouse visa at a time so it's much easier than the visa that I needed to get previously now luckily I will also be getting my permanent residency this year because I've lived in Iceland long enough to be able to get that and next year I'm eligible for Icelandic citizenship which is definitely something that I'm going to apply for. Now let's talk work. I personally work online as do a lot of my friends. They're in the same industry, photographers. <laughs> so it's freelance work and they get the jobs by word of mouth, working really hard and pitching to brands. Previously, 40% of jobs were in tourism. I presume this will bounce back in the future, but when who knows? Otherwise, the biggest industry in Iceland is fishing. Also, the art scene in Iceland is booming, but art doesn't always necessarily mean financial success. So just keep that in mind. Right now, because of the world situation, there is a huge unemployment rate here in Iceland because obviously everybody was in tourism. So all the jobs that were previously given to foreigners are often being given to Icelandic people. So if you can't sustain yourself with your income that you already have making online, I really don't recommend coming over because you probably won't be able to find a job. Here is a video on my channel about how to make money online if this is of interest to you. With the job situation, don't get disheartened. If it is your dream to be in Iceland, of course you can figure out what skill set is needed in Iceland and then start acquiring the skills to get you closer and closer to making your dream come true. Taxes. The fun topics. So yes, I pay taxes here in Iceland. I have an Icelandic company as well. The personal tax for individuals is 
insanely high. If you're making a bit of cash, it's close to 50%. The company tax here is a little bit more forgiving, except the accountant's fees <laughs> are not so forgiving. Moving on, things to note. Finding homes. There is a link in the bio for Facebook groups of where you can find accommodation. Cost of living. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I had some cash saved up when I arrived in this country. It ate it up so incredibly fast to the point where I was just going for a small coffee run, you know, just to treat myself every now and again. And it would bring tears to my eyes how painful and expensive it was. So if you're thinking of coming over here, please really, really keep that in mind. If you want to start off your life here, just as a FYI, my favorite secondhand shop is, <laughs> it's so nice. It's called the Good Shepherd or Goda Hedrin. Great place to get the basics of kickstarting your life here in this country. Transport. So the public transport in Reykjavik is quite sad. <laughs> it's a really sad situation. It's just not very good. There are buses, I've tried. It's just a little bit painful. If you have to, you'll manage, definitely. There's also scooters that they have. Get a bike if you can. Obviously during winter, I wouldn't recommend getting a bike because that would just suck. So my preference is to have a car and I actually have a rental car because the maintenance on cars here in this country is extremely <laughs> regular. This winter itself, Three times our windscreens cracked. Three times from rocks hitting the windscreen. It was, ah, oh, plus the regular tire changes and the cars here, they don't last very long because they just get destroyed by the weather. So I personally have found it quite useful to have a rental car so that when something goes wrong, I can just go boop. <laughs> you can have long-term rentals here. I get mine from Geysir. If you're looking to get a car though, a good place to buy is bilasolor.is, which is carsforsale.is. My chair's creaking a lot. Sorry about that. And finally, integrating into society here. Recently, I spoke to a friend and he said that it takes about two years to integrate into a new country and to feel like you're at home. So I've been here for five and a half years, but throughout that time I was traveling almost nonstop. So I can't say that I was even slightly integrating myself into this world, but December, 2019, when everything shut off, I've been here almost full time and it's been a process. I can feel the pains of integrating into a new society. It's just different. What I found is I have to stop comparing this place to other places because obviously there are so many great things about this country but also so many things that are painful about this country you're gonna get island fever it is a small island not everything's available the pace of life is a lot slower it is extremely dark so it can be hard one thing we have to keep in mind is that this place is so safe there is delicious fresh water and the air is pure the nature is brilliant there are less people there are opportunities if you squeeze yourself into the right sectors of society and the people are just amazing they are so kind to the point i think i started people i think you might be too kind i recently have started to notice that with the increase in foreigners living here you're starting to give up your language for us and i don't want that to happen because your language is one of the oldest unchanged languages to see you speaking english when i should be learning the language and i'm trying it's a hard language but it's a bad excuse and i feel bad that i haven't learned enough yet be tougher on us we have to learn your language i found that my friends that are able to speak icelandic now australians benjamin hardman for example he has been able to integrate himself so much better into society whereas i still don't feel like i'm that well received because I can't speak the same language as the locals and that sucks and I recently <laughs> slapped myself across the face because a lot of my friends here are foreigners and that sucks so I'm working really hard to not have that circle of friends that are always foreigners I want to feel like I am in Iceland uh, living here properly and that includes being part of the community with the Icelandic people so if you move here know that it is gonna be hard but please be so incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be here and do whatever it takes to show your appreciation to the people here and be kind to nature don't pollute <laughs> you may have your own customs from your own country but also you have to make a lot of space to integrate and learn about the culture of Icelandic people. So sometimes it's good to push your own culture aside to make space to fully understand and live the Icelandic culture because we owe it to the people that have so graciously allowed us to live in this amazing country. So thank you so much, Icelandic people. I very much appreciate it. Tak fyrir mig. And here is a message from our sponsor. Squarespace is a magnificent tool for business owners and artists like myself. It's a very easy platform to use. I personally don't like to fumble around with systems. I want it to be an easy process for people to find me, to sell my products, to have a beautiful online presence. And Squarespace does that. Of course, there's the Unreal 24 seven customer service that comes with Squarespace, as well as the drop dead gorgeous award-winning designer templates, which ensures you look professional even without having an eye for design. You also have complete marketing tools, including email management, 
management, top analytics tools to track the performance of your web page to continue refining and improving the results of your business in real time. Squarespace hosts your content seamlessly, text, video, photos, of course, but also audio blocks can be inserted in case you're a podcaster, for example. Tag the audio for iTunes when your audio block is placed in a blog. Rejoice with Squarespace member areas a gated community which allows for an extra income source. Squarespace already has powerful e-commerce capabilities, but now with new third-party tools, it can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. And that's just a few of the amazing aspects of Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Sorel to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe. Plenty of videos on my channel about Iceland, I think you will get basically all the answers you need about Iceland and more <laughs> and photography insights as well. Here's my Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to see more. And until next time, ladies, gents, boys and girls and everybody in between.